Good morning everyone from Jeff's Little Engine Service. Today I'm going to show you all Max. Today I'm going to show you all how to fix your typical Briggs & Stratton engine lawnmower. So this one doesn't run. Uh, I picked it up from a garage sale for a couple of bucks. Uh, it looks like we need a new rear tire on there, uh, rear wheel. Um, but to check it out, make sure that the engine is still good. There's a few things that I do. The first thing I do when I'm buying a, an old used lawnmower that doesn't run is I check it for oil. If there's oil in it, ooh, that's kind of scary. There's not much oil in this one. Uh, if there's oil in it, um, can pretty much be guaranteed that it has a, a good engine. Um, a lot of times what happens is the carburetors get plugged up on these and they just won't run so people throw them away. So that one was a little scary, uh, not much oil in it, but I think we may still be good because I did see some oil in it. Um, what I think I'm going to do next is spray a little starting fluid uh, in the air filter there just to see if it tries to start. If it sputters and tries to start, then I know that it probably still has compression and, and it will be fine. But also what that tells me is that if it pops and sputters like it wants to start, that tells me that it's getting spark. And it usually is a good indicator of that the engine still has compression too. Um, but the component that is missing would be the um, you know, we're not getting fuel to the engine. Now well, let's bring this mower out front a little closer to all, to all my tools. First thing I'm going to do is see if this thing will fire up. I have a little bit of starting fluid here and a 5 16 wrench. Take off the air filter cover. Let's see how nasty this, uh, you can zoom in here if you want. Oh, look at that air filter. Yeah, zoom in on that bad boy. That is just nasty. That could be why this engine wasn't running. It's all oiled up. So right in that hole there is where you're gonna wanna spray the starting fluid. And we'll give it a, give it a pull, see what happens. Oh. Grenaded. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so you all saw what happened. Um, the starter pull start mechanism grenaded on me. And the dogs are not impressed. Let's see if we can figure out what happened here. I showed you that uh, piece that broke off. There it is. Yeah, that little component came flying out from under there when I tried to pull start it. Uh, but I did notice that uh, you take this off with these two Phillips head screws there. This comes off. Um, then you have three 5 16 bolts that hold the gas tank on here. And once you take those out, you can just rotate the gas tank. Um, there's also a mounting bolt down here for the gas tank. It looks like it's already <clears throat> been taken out on this one. That was probably part of the problem. But mainly you can see the starter pull rope mechanism where it's riveted down just bro broke off. So everything broke. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Next thing we need to do here is take off the oil dipstick and we just remove it's another 5 16 That's tight. I'm gonna need to get a socket. 5 16 socket. I'm gonna have to put down the camera. Oh no, I got it loose. So when you take that out, uh, what you want to do is just you kind of wiggle this and you lift it up just a little bit because there's a little tab right here you have to get to lift up and clear and then you can rotate it all out so I'll show you what I mean here just up a little bit okay I think that's that's probably enough 
almost, and then you can just rotate it out, get it out of your way. Now we have, let's see, we have four three-eighths bolts. We have two in front to remove, and two in back here, and then we should be able to lift off that whole engine shroud in one piece. Lift off this and all of this in one piece. Sometimes there's a bolt right there that's connected to a muffler guard that you have to take out too. And this is the model number of this particular lawnmower. It's a Troy built, easy start, six and a half horsepower lawnmower. Very common Briggs and Stratton engine design. Um, I think when they first came out they called them a quantum engine, but they use them on a lot of equipment over the past 20 years or so. So to hold the camera and take these off, I actually have to use my left hand, which I don't normally use, but my right hand currently uh, I'm dealing with a case of carpal tunnel, that's why I have the brace. And you've got this one, and these two. And I'll go ahead and jump forward to all four bolts have been removed. Now it's time just to lift this off. Sometimes that little tab right there uh, gives you a little trouble, but usually you can work it right past. Yeah, so that whole mechanism needs to be replaced and I'll just replace this whole engine shroud too. I suppose I could always just replace the parts um, but I think I'm just going to because I have extras I'm just going to replace the whole engine cover and pull start assembly and the gas tank comes right off more parts and there's a lot of mud down in there which accumulates Ew. so I'd recommend cleaning that out a little bit and I'll show you how to gap the coil as well. That's about the only thing you need to do. I suppose it's probably a good idea to clean out the carburetor and dry it out at this point as well. So what we need to do is basically just take off the float bowl there. It's up under there. So just take off the float bowl there and we'll drain it out and clean it out. We can loosen this up, disconnect the handle. This is how uh, to take things apart here. Poke it through the hole, the cover. <clears throat> and there you go. And we're going to replace this whole engine housing. Find an old used one out in the junkyard. We're still suffering from the ice storm, as you can see, with my outdoor work area. Uh, let's see if we have one of these covers. Um, yeah, I have one there. And there's one here. That well, looks like I'm going to have to do some work getting these off. To be continued. I want to give you all a bird's eye view of how to gap a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower coil. Uh, it's real easy. You can see uh, some of my other videos on how to take the engine shroud off. And once you get to this point, you're going to need a quarter inch socket. Some have a 5 16 um, and a feeler gauge. And uh, more specifically, you're going to need a number 12 feeler gauge. The reason why I say number 12 feeler gauge is because when I first started out in this business, a really nice old guy named Herb Schaefer, who used to do lawnmower repair, uh, rest in peace Herb, he's since passed on, but uh, he was kind of my mentor in a way for a few years when I first was starting out. And I'll never forget uh, him telling me for the first time uh, what the measurement 
what the gap was at the coil, he told me it was 12. So I always remember that. So anyways, and that's what we want the gap to be um, between each terminal and the flywheel. Uh, more specifically, each terminal and the magnets on the flywheel. So, just crack it loose. And keep in mind, these are very fragile bolts, so you want to be extremely cautious when unscrewing them, or specific, more specifically, when you're screwing them back in, not to over torque. Because they will break off on you, and then you're screwed. So, there's my 12. And if I didn't loosen it enough, what I do is I just use a screwdriver here to kind of stick in and pry it. Pry the gap open. And put in my 12. And that's where you want to tighten it. Don't need to fully torque it down at this point because you still need to do the other side here. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. Slides in and out, doesn't get stuck. So we tighten these down. Can't remember what the torque is on these. I suppose I'll look that up for you so you. New mechanics don't uh, <clears throat> over torque them and break them off because I know I've done that when I was starting out, but now I know how tight they need to be. That one's still good, and that one's perfect too. So, that is how to gap a coil. I finally got this cover off this old engine here, and you can see what it's supposed to look like in here how it's supposed to function. See how those little teeth come out? Yep. And I'm going to go ahead and squirt some WD-40 in there just so it functions good, but we already have a intact pull rope, so all we need to do is lube that up and, and mount this sucker. And I usually spray lube down into the center hole and then into the spring hole where the spring is sticks out you want to lubricate in there as well and why not there all right much better okay let's mount this sucker right there those four bolts back in. Be careful not to over tighten. They, keep, they will break or strip if you tighten them up too much. We still haven't tested this thing <clears throat> to see if it'll even run yet, but at least now we've fixed the starter pull start. So try it again. Spring starting fluid inside the carburetor there and uh, trying to give it a pull start. Fingers crossed. Okay. I'm going to put some oil in this thing. I know it's low. And I'm going to start it up again. Um, but I think that tells us what we wanted to know, that the engine is still good. So I'm going to proceed to clean out the carburetor and the fuel system, maybe replace the fuel line over here and clean out the gas tank, dry out the gas tank, reassemble, and I think we're going to have a good lawnmower. So let's get to that carburetor here. It's a half inch socket, that's what I usually use to take that off of there. So since we have determined that the engine's still good, um, I think this lawnmower is worth 
continuing to work on. So let's go ahead and change the spark plug and clean out the carburetor and the fuel line. Replace the fuel line if we have to. You're going to get a little bit of gas that comes out right here. I usually have a rag underneath. There we go. That's about a quarter cup of gas that comes out of there. Sometimes the float bolt comes right off. Sometimes you have to uh, tap on it and then the float bolt kind of pops off. Okay, there we go. I want to show you what I found inside the carburetor because this is important. Oops. So, turn the light here. You can see all that crud. And there's water in there. And yeah, that's not good. So, we want to clean all this out and start over fresh and clean. So, here's the float bowl and the uh, bolt that holds the float bowl on. It's actually the main jet for the carburetor so when you go to clean this out you'll want to make sure that you clean out uh, all the little holes. There's a couple of holes on the sides there. I don't know if you can see that. And there's a hole right in the middle. So you want to make sure all those passageways are nice and clean as well. You guessed it, that noise is my compressor. Uh, and that there is the carburetor float and I'm going to go ahead and use my compressed air here to, to blow that off. Blow out the primer hole. Make sure to blow uh, through the main nozzle up through the center of the carburetor. And blow through the fuel line. Make sure it's good and clean or just go ahead and replace the fuel line. It's only about two bucks. Sometimes you luck out and you don't have to do much cleaning of the carburetor. I just want to show you. You can see the inside of this carburetor, the float and everything. It, uh, it's pretty clean, so you can use some carburetor cleaner or just some air like I did to, to blow everything off. A clean toothbrush to scrub it off if there's any residue on there. And I think this carburetor is ready to go back together. I blew some air through the fuel line here, but this fuel line is pretty old and nasty, so I think I'm going to replace it. Boom! New fuel line. And to clean out the fuel tank here, make sure it's nice and dry on the inside. Uh, let it sit out in the sun for a while, rinse it out. Make sure it's thoroughly dry before I uh, put it back on the mower. But you remember how it went on, right? We've got the three bolts here on top and then we have one here on the side which we were missing uh, but I'll show you what that one looks like because I have a replacement and I guess I forgot to mention to now we can go ahead and swing this back into position and you can see where the tab goes right there all right and it was a 5 16 that held it in place as you can see I have the gas tank back on I have the uh, three mounting bolts mounted loosely because I still need to mount this bottom one. Make sure at this point that you've already mounted the oil dipstick. Um, and this is the bolt and spacer that was missing from this lawnmower. Uh, what mounts on the lower part of the gas tank there. And I was able to rob it off of this old one here where I got the engine shroud cover from. So yeah, you put this uh, spacer on first, up against the engine, and then the gas tank, and then this bolt, this shoulder bolt goes on. It's a 3 8 socket that I use to put this on. Once again, that's where it mounts, right under there if you can see it. Got to put down the camera to get it in. So I have everything mounted up securely now, as far as the gas tank goes, and it's going to be time to put the carburetor back together. Just make sure when you do that, that the gasket up in there 
It's a little O-ring you can see there. Make sure that that's still in place. And once again, you'll want to make sure that the carburetor is completely clean when you reassemble. Be careful when you tighten the uh, float bowl bolt back in place. Um, you don't want to over tighten it because it will strip out the carburetor really easy. So just make sure it's good and snug. Let's check out the condition of the spark plug. Not too bad, but we'll definitely replace it. And once again, I'm going to get to rob another part off of this engine because that's a darn near brand new spark plug there. Let's do it. Boom! New spark plug. I'm also going to make sure that all of these head bolts are still tight. See, that one's kind of loose. Tighten it back. Tighten them all up in a random sequence. Yep, they're all pretty loose. but it hasn't blown yet, so let's run it. Okay, new air filter. So if you remember, it was really low on oil, so I'm going to add some oil, make sure we're up to normal levels there before we fire it up again. first time we fired this thing up it was smoking uh, quite a bit. Um, hopefully that doesn't mean that uh, there has been internal engine damage. A lot of times what that means was uh, oil made it into the upper end by the spark plug or um, looking back, remember what the air filter looked like on this thing? It was so clogged with oil uh, that could have been why it was smoking too. So I expect it may smoke a little bit when we fire it up here again for the first time. Um, but that should dissipate. Let's see what happens. Primer it. Primer it again. So if you're wondering what I did there, um, you noticed when we first fired it up, the engine was revving uh, quite a bit. Well, the governor spring was too tight, um, which is this spring here. So that little loop, that metal loop, I just pushed it inwards so the spring wouldn't be so tight. And that's what lowered the throttle on it. So I think that qualifies for, for bringing a lawnmower back from the dead. Thanks for watching, folks.